Hello crafty friends, welcome to this spend less craft more video in which we make some DIY washi tape and use it on a happy birthday card. So the first thing I'm going to do is some smushing and I'm going to smush on this full sized sticker. So this is almost A4, it's got a bit of a a border around it but it's a single sheet of label paper so I've got salvaged patina distress oxide here and I'm going to pick it up with my smusher after adding some water to it and smush now this paper is not designed to take wet media but it does okay the media tends to soak straight in it doesn't mix and mingle or move around. But the trick I think is don't use too much water and you'll have to experiment with whatever label paper or sticker paper you're using. I'm going to gently dry this with my hair dryer. I don't want to overheat it because it might affect the glue on the back of the sticker. So step one was smushing, step two is going to be stenciling and I've got this circle stencil and they're smallish circles so that just means that any strips that I cut from this should have some small circles and part circles on them. And I think one of the tricks with DIY washi tape is to use patterns that are small enough to make sense when your paper is cut into strips. I'm not covering the whole thing and I'm doing some light blending and dark blending just to give some variation. With a pattern like this, it doesn't actually matter if you get your stencil straight because they're just circles so you can just go in however you want okay I think that's enough of that one so for this next step step three I'm going to tape down my paper because I don't want it shifting around and I'm going to use this stamp so step one was smushing step two stenciling step three is stamping and it is a mixed media stamp with a grid pattern on it a distressed grid but I, because it is directional, I don't want to get bits pointing all over the place. I want it to look intentional. So I'm just going to hold my paper still with some paper and try and stamp on in the same orientation each time. And again, I'm not going to stamp all over. Just a few bits here and there, like that I think. Before I move on from the stamping stage, I'm going to stamp on some text. This is unreadable, distressed, mixed media text. Again, I'm keeping my paper tape down because I don't want it shifting. I think I'm going to cut my strips like this, so I want the text running horizontally like that so just ink that up i'm going in with peacock feathers now which is darker than salvaged patina so this should stand out and i might do a bit of second generation stamping so that there's variation The last stamp I'm going to put on is a stitched stamp and I'm going to add that in black for a bit of high contrast and again I want to try and get that as horizontal as possible although the stitched stamp is meant to look a bit kind of wonky and distressed I think so it's not a big deal if it's not 100% straight but again maybe some occasional 
second generation stamps or even third and I might leave some I think I'll leave that area without any for now just to give us options and now as a finishing touch I'm going to spatter on some gold metallic paint so here is our washi tape sheet we can use a trimmer to trim it into strips so we can just push it down half an inch or so and cut a strip and there you have a strip of homemade washi tape but what I'm going to do with mine is use this strip die and cut all the strips so they're exactly the same width. So here we have our homemade washi tape strips. I'm really pleased with the way they've turned out. I like the colour and the shimmer and a little bit of texture from all the stamps and stenciling. So I've got a bit of smooth white cardstock here that is about four and three quarter inches by six and three quarter inches. So my card will eventually end up as a five by seven ish card. I do intend to cut this down though with a panel once I've done, with a panel die, once I've done all the bits I want to do to it. So I'm thinking just keeping this simple for today because this was about creating the washi tape rather than the card, but we will do a card. And I'm just going to use my strips of washi tape across my panel like this. I'm going to create this pattern in the bottom corner of my card. And I'm just eyeballing where I put the strips. I want roughly the same gap between them. And I'm balancing the black, I think. So I've got a bit here and a bit here. So it's spread out. It doesn't drag the eye uh, where I don't want it to go or away from a focal point. And I want a bit down the bottom here that's got a second generation stamp on it so that it's not too... Uh, in your face but there's another one two three bit of the black there now hopefully i'll be able to peel this off and i can cut off oops that didn't work i'll do that in a minute i'll cut off the overhang just so it doesn't stick all over the place i don't have to do this particularly neatly if i'm careful i might be able to save these bits of diy washi tape and now I can use this die to cut out my panel and it will bevel the edges of where the washi tape is so it will all, all look nice and tidy. So there's my front panel all ready to go. I want to mount it but I want to give it a coloured mat around the outside so I'm going to colour a piece of smooth white cardstock with salvaged patina. So I think one of the main advantages with DIY washi tape is that you can colour match it to all of your other things that you're making in that project if you're using inks like this. So I can use salvage patina that I used on the washi tape to colour the mat and it all coordinates really well. So that's all layered up and now I'm going to put this on the front of my card. So all we need now is a focal point and a sentiment I think. 
So for my sentiment, I've got this happy birthday die set and I've cut that from gold foiled cardstock and that will sit rather nicely in there, I think. And I've also got this butterfly set. So this one cuts out the detail, this one just cuts out the outline. So this will sit nicely there. I'm thinking some peacock feathers. So there is my peacock feather coloured butterfly and now I'm going to cut the outline from gold. I've also cut the detail from gold so I'm wondering if that might just be a too full on. I want to remove the antenna from this just to reduce confusion and maybe put that on there but offset it like that perhaps. The other thing I think I'll do is back this butterfly with vellum. So there we have a nice sort of solid gold butterfly and I shall spread this out a bit more to get some glue on the back of this little one. Pop that on, offset so we can still see the gold and now I'm going to stick down my title, title, sentiment. It doesn't matter if I get a bit of glue on this gold foil because if I use a um, damp baby wipe, not a soaking wet baby wipe, but a damp baby wipe, I'll be able to wipe any glue off of it. Just for finishing touches, I'm going to use this little butterfly neck die to cut out some butterflies in gold and in peacock feathers. And then I'm gonna dot those around in a few places. So the first thing I'm gonna add is I'm gonna take a tiny little butterfly, want some glue there, tiny little gold butterfly, and add it above the eye because I've lost the dot from the die. And that little butterfly looks fine there. That will work as a as a dot for the eye and then I'm going to add some of these peacock feather coloured butterflies here and there. So on my last Spend Less Craft More video, the one in which I showed you how I made some DIY embellishments that I would never buy again, I had a few comments saying surely they're cheaper to buy than to make yourself. And my answer to that is that it really does depend on where you live and what you already have in your stash. Here in the UK, craft supplies are usually quite expensive to buy brand new, partly because we don't have many big UK based paper craft companies. So a lot of product gets shipped in from the US and other places. And that means it's generally more expensive because of shipping costs and import duty, etc. Those costs get passed on to us, the customers. But if you've already got things in your stash that you can use to make things, then you can make them more cheaply than to buy them. But I think the big plus with DIY embellishments, etc. is that you're making them yourselves, you're crafting more. And the less money you spend on consumables, the more money you can spend on tools like stamps and dies, which you can then use to make more embellishments. Each to their own, of course, but for me, this is the fun part, the making of my own embellishments, the using of my dies, my stamps, my tools, my inks to make things that are truly unique. And I think I will add some glossy accents to the blue butterflies so they look shiny too, rather than matte. 
so with small shapes like this I've learnt to put a dob of glossy accents in the middle and then without squeezing the bottle use it a bit like a paintbrush and draw the glossy accents along whatever shape you want it to go along so in this case I'm just drawing the dot along the ring the wings gosh I can't get my words out today so here we have one clean and simple ish happy birthday card made using some homemade DIY washi tape and I think we had about five steps to get our washi tape all of which start with s which is very pleasing to me i do like a bit of alliteration so we've got smushing stenciling stamping splattering and slicing uh, i think that's a, a good recipe for homemade washi tape so let me know in the comments do you make your own homemade washi tape or something similar i'd love to know what steps go into your diy washi tape and if you've enjoyed the video, if it's given you a few ideas, tips or tricks, then do subscribe, ring the notification bell, let me know in the comments, press the like button, all of those things, and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.